I am baking a spinach cake today and spinach cake is something we very often make especially around Easter and the springtime but it's also something we very much like to bring to a party. So let's quickly go over the ingredients that we need today. We don't really need them all at once, um, but over the course of this recipe, we will need all these things here. And uh, of course we need spinach. And I thought two packages of spinach here. Um, we need some shredded cheese. I have some gouda. I have a little bit of cold water. I have two leeks. I have some flour the garlic, two cloves, four eggs, some cream, uh, 125 milliliters, and 125 milliliters of milk, some salt, 150 gram of cold butter, and some parsley. And you will find the exact ingredients, uh, the amounts, everything you need to know on my blog. So in everything in detail and every step also will be on the blog. All right, let's start with the first steps. I will start with making the dough and for this I use the butter. You can see that I sliced it quite thinly. It's cold butter, that's important. And I put this in first. Next the flour. And half a teaspoon of salt. Now I mix this and while I'm mixing I am adding uh, three tablespoons of cold water. Take a look. Yep, a uh, very nice dough has created. I will quickly incorporate the few still dry ingredients. Still, there's always a little bit of flour on the bottom, so I try to pick it up with this. Slightly sticky dough, give it a short knead with my hands, and then I am putting this in a bowl, cover it, and put it in the fridge for the time being that I need to prepare the other ingredients. Okay, I don't want to knead it too long because the temperature of my hands might warm the butter too much and I want this dough to be cold. Okay. So the dough is in the fridge. That was a quick and easy thing to do. And now I prepare my leek and my parsley. I already washed my leek. Um, I removed all the sand that was in there and I just cut it into rings. I like the color of leek, it's beautiful green. Oops, let's not cut my fingers. Okay, and I throw this in the bowl here. Making a mess. Okay, and now the parsley, and I don't use all of it. This will make our guinea pig really happy. Mm. 
parsley smells really nice when you cut it. I mean, I really like parsley a lot. I'm not a big fan of cilantro though. I mean, it's not like I don't like it at all, but I think there's definitely something like too much cilantro. Especially here in Texas, people use cilantro quite a bit. And I don't like it in every meal. So, yeah, for me, well, I think what's, what's cilantro for people here in Texas is probably what parsley is for people in Germany. <clears throat> so we use a lot of herbs in our recipes, but mostly it's parsley. Okay. That's good. And that goes into the other bowl. And when you put something into a bowl from your cutting uh, board, you do not use the sharp side of your knife to put it in there. You use the, the other side, the opposite side, so you do not risk that your blade is getting dull. Okay, so always keep that in mind. That will keep your knives sharp a lot longer. All right. Now we get to the part where we need to fry our ingredients and I will move everything over to the stove. It will take a while because all the light and the cameras have to move over to there. I'm heating some oil here and it's already hot so I am now adding the leek to the pan. And I want to fry this for a little bit. This is not perfectly cut. Let me quickly fix this before it's too hot. All right, it's better. I also already add the garlic and you've noticed this probably in my other videos that I'm not using a garlic press anymore. It just didn't work well for me. So I'm using this technique which has turned out to be much easier and more efficient. Okay, and the second one. Oh, smells like leek very much. <clears throat> I like the smell. I like I basically like the smell of almost every food that's vegetable and frying. Okay. And uh, talking about vegetables, so this is a vegetarian recipe, but you can make it with some um, cubed ham slices. Uh, I decided to make this a vegetarian recipe. I do not really like meat every day. I don't think we need meat every day. I, mean, I, I don't just think it, I know it just for health. It's better if we eat more vegetarian and it's also better for the environment. And um, yeah, so I would recommend you eat this without any ham just to give the pigs a break and the planet maybe too though I, I think pork is not as bad for the environment as the beef but still it's not perfect and you can see this is already getting a little bit soft which means that I will soon add my other ingredients I'll give it just a little bit more. Isn't this green 
beautiful. I mean, it's so bright and so, you know, all these different shapes of green here. Very pretty. Okay, I will increase the heat a little bit because I will add now my spinach. And I, you know, there's some liquid here. I could remove it, but I actually let it go into the pan. It will evaporate during this process. There we go. So that's why I increased the heat so that the cold ingredient doesn't cool the pan too much. Good pan has a good recovery time. Let's see how fast it takes or how long it takes until this pan is hot again. Maybe go on eight here. And it's already boiling again. So this is a good pan. Cost me a few bucks, but it's worth it. So it recovered quite fast. And I let this cook here now a couple of minutes until the liquid that you can still see here, until that has evaporated. And then it's time to take this off the heat and add the parsley. I use the time while this is um, in the pan to prepare the baking pan. And let me see. So this looks great. You see there's basically not much liquid here left. It's all evaporated and I turn off the heat here, take this off and add the parsley. This is quite green, isn't it? So much green and the scent of this is just wonderful. So when you cook it you will know what I mean. Okay, so let's move back to the kitchen island for my next step. I've just set my oven to 225 degrees Celsius, which is 445 degrees Fahrenheit. I am preparing my baking sheet now. I've already, let me show you, I've already greased it and put some parchment paper on the bottom. And now I, I took out the dough that I created at the start of this video and I'm lightly flouring my board. And now I need to roll this as good as possible so I can put it into my baking pan. So, take this aside and you can see this is a very nice thin 
bottom for my spinach cake. I hope we get it in and then once, yes. Great, nice. Alright, so now I take the rest of my dough and I knead it a little bit so I can shape it again. And I basically make two rolls that should cover about half of the circum half of this here. What's the left? Right? Okay, so this and now same thing here. So now shape this around. Okay, and I need this to be a little higher, so I go in these corners. Press it upwards. Hope you can see that. So this is the corner. And you see it, it gets higher here. It's always the tricky part because you don't want it to be too thin so it would break later. That's not what you want to accomplish. You want to have your slices evenly come out of the baking pan and the, the spinach cake. But at the same time you need a certain height to really cover the sides of your cake. This is probably boring to watch, sorry for that, but that's the, how, the way how it's done. And not everything can be exciting, unfortunately. Uh, see that this is here a little bit too thin and I just move some of my dough from another area over to here to even it out. Okay, so this is what it should look like. And now I take a fork and poke in here a couple of times, which helps with the baking. All right, so I set this aside and now I finish my filling. Now I need my other ingredients, the eggs, the cream, the cheese and the milk. At first I 
cocoons the eggs and put them in this bowl. And then I scramble them a little bit. And I add the milk. I also add the cream. Okay. So at this point, I also want to add some salt and pepper. I could also add that later, but it's easier to do it now since this is just liquid. And now I add my cheese. And I have a little more cheese on the side because I like to cover my spinach cake with a layer of cheese on top. So if you like that too, you should plan on a little more cheese than in the recipe. Okay, so this is nicely mixed. And now I get my spinach and leek mix and add it right in here. So, a little bit of a mix again. So it's all mixed well and not one corner just with cheese and no corner with some other ingredients. I want it nice and even. Okay. And you don't have to use Gouda for the cheese, you can use any cheese you like. In Germany we use Emmentaler, that's a cheese that you can buy here. It's quite expensive. It's European cheese, which means it's imported. Um, I think my favorite cheese for this is definitely the Gouda. Um, Emmentaler is nice too. I think it has less fat, but I might be wrong about that. Okay. Now, time to put this into the baking pan. Let's see how high it goes. Yeah, I think we're good here with the height. Seems to work out. Okay, let's just put everything in here. And I try to make it quite even on the top. Look how nice this looks. It's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So. And as I said, I add a little more cheese right on the top. Here we go. And the oven is almost at the temperature. And I can, in a few minutes, just put it into the oven. And depending on your oven, it should be finished after like 30 to 45 minutes. That's 
I know quite some uh, range but it depends a little bit on how much liquid you have in your spinach and um, so basically what you're looking for when you want to take it out of the oven you have to look that it is really firm in the middle it's it should not have any liquid egg um, mixing in here so yeah so if, if you feel it needs a little longer and maybe your spinach cake is already getting a little bit too dark on the top just cover it with a little bit of aluminum foil or lower the heat of your oven and just give it a little more time at a lower heat it will be done eventually so just check after half an hour frequently until you see that everything in this cake is firm and nothing is liquid anymore okay so now let's put this in the oven mm -hmm. 